prayer. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you for this time and this opportunity, Lord, to um, continue to learn about apostolic um, ministry um, and the aspects of the different aspects of apostolic ministry, oh Lord, that we may be able to be effective in the calling that you have uh, designed and purpose for us. Father God, I pray right now, Lord, we invite your Holy Spirit in to have his way, oh God. Give us rhema word for this moment, oh God. Give us revelation. Give us insight. And Lord, Father God, stir up our spirit, men, that we may be able to uh, go forth um, out and carry out your gospel as you have deemed us to. So we thank you and we praise you this day in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And we are going to pick up with page two. Um, in the middle is where we left off at, talking about apostolic teams and networks. And uh, we have been discussing in the past about the different aspects of uh, apostolic and, and how uh, the works, how uh, the planting and the development and the aspects of ap apostolic is necessary in the body of Christ to be effective um, witnessing and how to even in this last days, how to go out um, and how we should be able to be filled with the Holy Spirit and make sure we're being led and, led and guided by the Holy Spirit. And so in the um, box, it talks about the definition of a, of a team, an apostolic team. Uh, it is a core. The team is the core of leaders. Um, and they are apostolic leaders that are sent by the Holy Spirit for a specific and ongoing apostolic mission. So um, one thing we want to be able to see is that um, as a team, our purpose is not just to go forth, but remember it says here, it is specific and it's ongoing. So God never just sends us as we will talk about going forth and going out um, into uh, our um, assignments that God has given us. And we talked about going forth and we, we talked about God being specific and showing the, uh, and, I mean, being called by God and being led by God when we go out. But also, too, he'll be specific. He's not going to send you out haphazardly ha um, to go out into the nations. Yes. Amen. He's not going to send you where you're not um, equipped Amen. Uh, or well equipped. And so, um, and to back these up, there are specific times that we could give scripture to back up when God was specific about where he was sending his people. One prime example was when the, the woman at the well with the Samaritan and Jesus. You know, Jesus was at one point thinking another way, but God, he said, he said, it must me that I go. Amen. See, God was specific in where he wanted Jesus to go at that appointed time yes. to where he needed to be in order to minister to the woman at the well. And so that in that same aspect, we have to know that God is specific with us. Amen. And if he's specific with us, and, and we are listening and being obedient instead of being led by our own uh, agenda or our own way, then God, our, our work will be effective and we will not uh, be open or yield to um, the enemy. Also, too, not only is it Pacific, it's, it, it talks about the team is going to be ongoing. What you're doing is, is, is not just for that moment. Well, it is for that moment, but not a temporary thing. Our work is not where we do it for that for that moment and then we just stop. Right. The task has been done. The task has never been done. Our, our, our calling, we are, even in our calling in life, when we're going and we're ministering, it should be an ongoing thing. When, when the t um, need arises and God fulfills, it should be ongoing because that is our purpose. It's not just we cannot look at... Um, we can't look at the missions as being just a specific thing at that time. Um, it will be for certain things for that time and for that moment. But when you look at the overall aspect of our purpose, our ministry is supposed to be ongoing. It's supposed to be ever growing, ever, um, uh, like we always like to say, and um, our mentor like to say, leaders reproducing leaders. It should be always where we're constantly moving forward, gathering um, others within the midst and continue to, to grow the kingdom, advance the kingdom of God. Amen. Amen. So when we think about a team, and, and notice with the team, all of this has to work in, in, in together. It's not, a team is not just one person. It's several members. And so these members have to, we talked about it before, about the team being on one accord. 
but also too they have to have the same mindset and the same drive in order to get it going then our next definition is going to be of talking about network the definition of a network is a um as far as concerning apostolic is a growing number of churches connected and united under a pacific and progressive apostolic leadership now notice that and in this i like this definition as well too because it's talking about uh they're connected and united and so i like that they put connected and united as separate because oftentimes we'll think you connected and united as one but the definition what they mean by connected means they got to be a relationship amen amen there's a relation connection means a relationship and uh, we also have to look at being having a relationship with our fellow brothers and sisters and fellow church members in the, in the body of Christ in order for the advancements of God's kingdom. And we should all be praying for this. Is the, is the um, seeing us as one, one body. Made up of many parts like God talks about. But one body. Because oftentimes that's what is hindering the flow of uh, the progression. Even in today's world right now when we look at a lot of stuff. The church is not as powerful as it needs to be because we're not having a relationship with each other. We're not connected with each other as we should be spiritually. Amen. We got so much traditions and we got so much ways that we put and, and it blocks the flow of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You got so many different denominations that are, and, and their ways are block the flow of the Holy Spirit. And so... Um, one thing about a network, when God puts a certain amount of net, uh, churches together, He has you'll you'll find out they'll have the same similar similar pur similar purposes. Now they may have different aspects because some churches may be more equipped in certain areas than others. But when it comes, uh, you know, as far as numbers and and what they can be able to do, but they're all they'll always have the same purpose and the same mindset. That church, those churches that have the same purpose they'll have the relationship they'll they'll have the communication back and forth and then they'll be united under the purpose so they'll they'll have the um they'll be united under the the task that they have um, come together for to like again to do the progressive apostolic under a progressive apostolic leadership and notice it's saying being aggressive meaning that means to continue to push and move forward Amen. Not to become complacent in what we do. Amen. So when we look at the apostolic uh, apostolic teams, we apostolic teams, we must remember that they are um, the embryo stage for emerging networks. Amen. Meaning that they are the they are the hub and the so uh, the beginning of where how um, networks can emerge is through having teams. Amen. So let's look at some biblical examples of teens. Let's go to Acts 8 and 14. Then that's an example of Peter and John. Amen. And it says, when the apostles in Jerusalem heard that the people of Samaria had accepted God's message, they sent Peter and John there. And as soon as they arrived, they prayed for these new believers to receive the Holy Spirit. Also, let's look at um, Paul and Barnabas. That's in Acts 13, 2 and 4. It says, one day as these men were worshiping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, appoint Barnabas and Saul for the special work to which I have called them. And in verse 4, so Barnabas and Paul and Saul were sent out by the Holy Spirit. They went down to the seaport of Sesusia and then sailed for the island of Cyprus. Amen. So um, these are just examples. We do have some other ones such as with Barnabas and John Mark, um, Paul and Silas, um, the companions um, in Acts chapter 16 verse 6 and um, also with Timothy. And then you have Apollos, Aquila and Priscilla. That's in uh, verse 18 and 24. 
Um, one, I do want to go to X, um, X 15 verse 37. I do want to, I want to point something out with that. But as far as when we look at these examples, notice that God started out when he was, um, going forth and, and preaching his word. He started out in teams. He had groups of teams of members to be able to go out and begin to preach the word. Also, too, when we look at the other two in Acts chapter 8 and Acts chapter 13, notice God, um, the movement of the Holy Spirit was working and flowing. It says when he, when the people, when God had learned of the people that of Samaria was beginning to believe, he then set up a team. He sent Paul and, Bar uh, excuse me, he sent Peter and John. And then you have in, um, with Paul and Barnabas, uh, they were praying and fasting and the Holy Spirit came upon them. And, uh, came upon the elders in that church and said, uh, anoint these two and send, uh, send these two apostles out. So um, when we look at how the flow of the Holy Spirit works and when we're setting up ministry teams, especially when we're doing mission work, notice it has to be led by the Holy Spirit. God will uh, um, come in with the pastor, especially when you're talking about an apostolic network and apostolic church. When they, when they begin to go and do missionary work, God will always uh, begin with the apostle. He'll always flow to the apostle and let him know who needs to be paired up and where they need to go. He'll send them for the purpose that is 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 set to aside, mm -hmm. so so that so that the advancement of the kingdom can go forth. He'll never, like I said, he'll never just sin haphazardly. And he's always going to start with the head when he's dealing with an apostolic nation. And it may, even in the, in the team, in the ministry, and we'll talk about that a little bit later on, it depends on for the people that is need to be ministered to at that time, it, that'll decide what, who, who will be sent as far as whether where an apostle will need to be sent forth and an evangelist or apostle and a prophet. God knows who who to plant in that, those areas of divine um, appointment. Um, so in, Act, in Acts 15, verse 37, it reads, After some time, Paul said to Barnabas, Let's go back and visit each city where we previously pre preached the word of God, of the Lord, to see how the new believers are doing. And what I like about um, that particular scripture. When we look at it. Um, when we look at it. Notice. The apost the perp uh, we see the, also the purpose of an apostolic team. And this is where we talk about. How apostolic team the work is ongoing. Remember when I said that in the beginning. It doesn't stop when you go for the first mission. But here you have. Where he says. It's an ongoing ministry because those that you uh, talk to and, and minister to the first time, you're going to have to go back again and just check on them and see where they where they may have um, um, any questions that they may have concerning the ministry or anything they may have anything they may have concerning um, the um, you know if they may have struggles in their faith and things like that. Remember those who you minister to. Um, and they, and you, you do have some that plant and water and seed, but they are still, you know, they, they need the guidance as well. So you just don't want to leave them hanging out there into this, um, spiritual atmosphere. Amen. You always want to, uh, you know, it's just like a little baby. You're going to always kind of try to lead God and direct them. You're not just going to, for that moment, just deal with them at that moment and then just leave them to their own selves. Amen. And so I like what we talk about. It shows here that it's an ongoing purpose. You always want to go back and see the condition of your flock. That's what makes a, a great apostolic team. Is to help them, help um, the people grow spiritually. Amen. Okay, let's go to page 53. It says the multi multicultural aspect of these teams was a dynamic feature. A network is an extension of the team ministry principle, which brought together the variety of apostles, pastors, prophets, teachers, and evangelists that were necessary to plant and establish churches throughout the known world. Amen. And, and that goes back to what I was saying. God uses all. 
He's going to use the whole fivefold ministry gift when he goes out and to um, preach to the word of God. He's, it's never going to be where it's just he's only going to send out pastors or he's only going to send out one um, aspect of the fivefold ministry gifts. Um, it, uh, we all work together and some things are necessary for certain um, certain parts of ministry. And it says, what is wrong with the above characterization? A network is not a team, but it's a result of the team ministry. And so, like they're saying, when we begin to go out and we begin to minister and we begin to um, teach of God's word and, and show and, and uh, those that are uh, with us, then they will too will begin to uh, do the same that we tend to do. If you notice that they'll come aboard and then they'll want to be uh, have the desire to want to spread the, the Lord's work, and then they begin to create teams of themselves. And so again, it's re leaders reproducing leaders, and then you be having come, you then have multiple networks to be able to make the ministry effective. Amen. The defining element of a network is networking partnerships where a multiple number of churches and ministries partner together to do a comprehensive harvest strategy of a key region of the world. Major characteristics of a network, of apostolic network, is team leaders of leaders. Amen. So even in a team, you got to have a leader within that one. Amen. They always, God always gives structure and order. And usually he's going to give it to um, the, the apostle, if the apostle's in that group, he's going to show the apostle first of everything and how the order of things go. But even in that, you will have a specific leader within and um, a, a specific leader within other leaders. Active operation of the fivefold ministry gifts. This is what makes a, a, a effective network. The fivefold ministry gifts will always be present and will always be working. Amen. You never have, um, like we say, to get the fullness of a ministry, you have to have all ministry gifts. We do have a lot of churches now that you have some that don't believe in the fivefold ministry gifts. And they're not operating at the fullness of what they could be. But God says, you know, for uh, the best, he would like to see all five working. They're translocal. Meaning they're, they, they go from local places to local places. Amen. They church plant. And they leadership training and sending. Uh, uh, they have leadership training and sending centers. That means they, again, they're producing leaders. They're building up leaders. They're training leaders. They're training others to go out and preach the gospel. And to be able to bring forth in many, um, others into the fold of the body of Christ. That is our purpose of what we should be doing in the body of Christ. Amen. So it says the pattern for apostolic journey, journeys is an international team. Teamwork with, with um, Jerusalem and Antioch. The plant mission. The adjustment to, to new target. Team persecution. New churches planted. Team, new team birth. And then a return to Antioch. They're, we're going, they're actually talking about the... Uh, the order of what was happening in the uh, book of Acts. And so let's go to Acts chapter 15. I, I was, we're actually already there. Chapter 15 verse 37. And I'm just going to read a while to eight, chapter 18 to 22. And it says, Barnabas agreed and wanted to take a long jump mark. But Paul disagreed strongly since John Mark had deserted them in Pamphylia and had not continued with them in their work. Their disagreement was so sharp that they separated. Barnabas took John Mark with him and sailed for Cyrus. Paul chose Silas and as he left, the believers entrusted him to the Lord's gracious care. Then he traveled throughout Syria and Cecilia, strengthening the churches there. And then a well skip, and uh, it says um, at 16 and 1, Paul first went to Debrir, then to Lysuria, where there was a young disciple named Timothy. His mother was of a Jewish believer. And then um, 
we all know the point of that God um, end up Paul end up ministering to and, and teaching uh, Timothy then when he became up on his wing and then Timothy began to um, uh, teach over the churches that um, Paul had established in the area amen and I'm not going to go on through each one but it basically when you look at Acts chapter 15 through uh, chapter 18 it is talking about uh, Paul's ministry journey amen and how um, during that time he in his uh, apostolic movement was able to go forth and show um, show us how the apostolic movement moves and it says Paul's apostolic journey serve as a prototype for today um, and so it shows us how how we are supposed to move um, give us a prototype of what we are to do and how um, once we are coming to other nations we're not just supposed to teach the word but we are to, to show the, to show um, and get the, get them established a lot of times what I think about is what we do as far as um, what we're currently working on what we're doing with other nations uh, right now with our, our missionary and our mission group with um, the African nations we go over there we are preaching the word of God but we're also establishing and setting them up to where they can become prosperous in their own selves to be able to um, be effective saints in the ministry of God you know we help them um, Establish, you know, uh, to let them be self self sufficient. I can't even speak it today. Thank you. Self sufficient, um, not just um, monetarily um, and and physically, but we also teach them to be self sufficient spiritually, to where they're able to um, be able to go forth and and really dissect the word and read the word and be able to go forth to go and produce. And uh, create uh, leadership within their own ministries. And to go forth in other nations and other parts. Even remote places in Africa. And so that's the same thing as what we're looking at. Um, as far as when we go forth. We are we have the example of Paul in the ministry. And note even in the beginning when God, God did what he did with um, Paul and Barnabas. Like we said. His purpose is, is sometimes the disagreement that came forth. It was a blessing in return because they were able to reach more in the gospel. Amen. And it says, this mission began with contention over who was to be on the same team. God works good in this situation as now there are two apostolic teams like we were just discussing. Paul and uh, Silas and Barnabas and John Mark. And so sometimes that may start out that way. You may start out with a group of team members. And then within that. Because of the of the strategy or, or different, um, and it may not not necessarily have to be a disagreement, but in order to um, to tackle certain areas in, in certain regions, um, especially like today, we may have we may have a team from a, a certain church and we have one common goal, but then we may see an area of need in a different area. Well, we still have to tend to what is going on here. But we'll send, we may break down the team to create a new team to be able to continue to go forth in a different area or different aspect. God has ways of, of doing that, but we have to make sure we're again led by the Holy Spirit and not by our emotions. Amen. And it says, Paul team quickly became a truly international team with the addition of Timothy, whose grandfather was Greek. Amen. And so when we look at this, we again will uh, pick up and we'll see how um, his ministry began to flourish. And then because when he picked up Timothy, he picked up a new person. And it was a, and it was a new now where he can uh, be able to uh, now speak to a different aspect, the Greeks. Amen. And so we'll um, actually pick up next week with that and talk about how... Um, teams how we can end up um, growing and, and, and how the network begins to get bigger. Amen.